First of all, I would have want to have made sure that before at the contracting stage, I would have said at what point that bit kicks in, at what point I feel like I have to do anything other than be a person-centered therapist with this client mm. and try and kind of follow what, where they're coming from. Um, so I will have made that kind of clear in terms of limits of confidentiality, which of course will depend on where I'm working and whether I can choose my own or have to follow a, a process. Yeah. And again, I'd be clear about that. You know, this is what I'm required to do or this is what I do because that's the only way I feel like I can work, you know. And so then when that when that trigger, when that bit's triggered, you know, someone's saying I'm going to kill myself tomorrow or something, and it probably varies in my practice as to whether I kind of, I'll probably note that and say, you know, that's something I'm concerned about. We'll come back to that five or ten minutes before the end and see where you're up to because I need to ask you more about that and I need to do something if I feel like you're not going to be safe mm -hmm. so then if I've got more time to stay with them and understand where they're feeling I'll do that but I'll make sure I've got time before the end to say I need to just check what you mean by that and what exactly your intentions are and mm -hmm. and and be clear and having been clear earlier on of what I will do if there's somebody saying really clearly this is what I'm going to do and this is when I'm going to do it yeah and within the contracting phase I will usually have kind of said to a client you know what this is either this is what I need to do for my agency or this is the situation if I feel concerned about you can we decide together what I can do in these circumstances who are you okay for me to contact you know and kind of agree a plan in advance yeah yeah so in that moment you're sharing power with the client as much as is possible yeah yeah and as long as they have that information in advance they're choosing to say that aren't they yeah, yeah. maybe although they might not be aware of that at the time they're saying it so it's kind of checking out. So I guess I'd reiterate what I'd said before and, you know, kind of check out where somebody's at. But I'd be clear that I'm going to divert from my usual role at that point to ask things that I need to ask. Yeah, that feels like really impo important to flag up. Like there is going to be a change in how you're mm -hmm. responding and mm -hmm. you don't just move into that, but it's just mm -hmm. saying to the client, right, it's going to be a bit different or it will be towards the end of the session. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it sounds really helpful to hold that in mind to really signal to the client that change. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and to be clear that that change is just for this point and this point is to get to, to the point where they continue to be safe and we can carry on therapy. And then I'll continue to be how I have been. That doesn't mean that from then on I'm going to ask every session whether they feel at risk. You know, yeah. I'm not going to have that agenda beyond that point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, the person then doesn't turn into someone who's just all about risk it, yeah once once they're more safe you go back to how you've responded yeah what which and you're saying that obviously really varies if you're working in an IAP service there'll be very mm -hmm. clear direction how to respond to risk mm -hmm. which could be very different from the decisions you take in private practice yeah some people yeah. will be required to do a risk assessment every session with every client so that you know but again even if that's the requirements i think you can be clear this is what i have to do now that's different from this other bit here mm -hmm.